Hello and welcome uh, to another edition of Matner's Movie Musings. Um, this episode or this this time I'll be discussing five movies that came out in May. Um, many of which are a few of which are available on streaming. Um, uh, they are as follows: uh, Wrath of Man, uh, the new Guy Ritchie film starring Jason Statham, uh, Spiral. Uh, the new addition to the Saw series uh, with Chris Rock and Samuel L. Jackson. Uh, the Woman in the w Window uh, with Amy Adams and Gary Oldman. And uh, Army of the Dead, uh, Zack Snyder's uh, long-awaited follow-up uh, to his very first film, uh, the remake of Do 2004's remake of Dawn of the Dead. And uh, Army of the Dead. And then... Uh, Last but not definitely not least, uh, we'll be discussing Disney's latest uh, live-action uh, reinterpretation of one of their characters, uh, Cruella. So, uh, starting with uh, Wrath of Man, um, this is uh, typical Guy Ritchie material. Uh, it's a very good, uh, well-made, uh, well-constructed. Uh, action film. Um, unfortunately, it's not really much more than that. Um, it uh, it contains great action sequences, uh, a great thriller plot, a very exciting uh, plot. Um, all done, as I said, uh, very well, highly stylized, as you would expect from Guy Ritchie. Um, he has made a nice transition back from um, making uh, Hollywood, quote unquote Hollywood films, if you will, um, and uh, kind of return more to the vein of uh, the kind of movies um, that made him famous uh, in the first place, um, like Lock, Stock, and Two Smoking Barrels, Snatch, and such. Um, and this film is more of a melding of the two. Uh, last year's The Gentleman, I, I think. Um, showcased uh, some of his best work um, in, in encompassing wholly what, what he's capable of, uh, both action-wise, plot-wise, character, um, the, the little comedic touches um, that he gives um, to his to his characters in his, in his films. Um, and Wrath of Man is, is a, isn't a too bad of a follow-up, um, although it does... Um, go more mainstream uh it's, it's a lot less inspired um than that film or uh lock stock and two smoking barrels and snatch for that matter uh it's it's sort of a melding of what he's what he, of, of, of what he's done over his career um in, in the sense that um he kind of uh transitioned uh, as i said into more mainstream films um kind of remaking films if you will uh or a re Imagining films, uh, he was responsible for uh, Disney's um, Aladdin, uh, which was which was a, a good good film for what it was, um, very well done. But certainly wasn't a Guy Ritchie movie. Uh, he made The Man from Uncle, the uh, adaptation uh, film adaptation of the, the classic uh, '60s uh, television series, and uh, gave us his. Uh, version of a King Arthur film a couple years ago. Um, none of those films did much for me. I just wasn't, uh, it seemed like he was just kind of going through the motions uh, with those films. Um, but uh, now he seems to be back and have flair uh, back in his um, filmmaking and uh, passion that seemed to be lacking. Uh, and, and Wrath of Man certainly, certainly uh, has all that. Um, I just, uh, it just doesn't do much more. It doesn't have any, uh, specific inspiration like The Gentleman or Lock, Stock, Two Smoking Barrels. It doesn't, um, have that Guy, Guy Ritchie, um, touch to the, to the character of the plot. Um, it does have his, his style, um, and as far as the action sequences go. And for that, it, it's worth seeing. I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Uh, it's a highly entertaining film. Um, and so, um, if, uh, especially since, you know, 
thanks to the coronavirus, there hasn't been too much um, of that, uh, and we certainly haven't been able to enjoy them in the theaters. Uh, this is certainly uh, worth a, worth a trip to the theaters for. Um, I, um, but uh, but as I said, uh, don't expect too much more than just a good time. But uh, these days, uh, that's certainly as welcome as anything else. So uh, I recommend Wrath of Man, um, four out of five stars. Uh, moving on um, to Spiral. Uh, this, uh, we're, we're, we're definitely stepping down in quality here. Uh, this is probably the uh, worst movie uh, in the Saw franchise. Um, Although, and I mean, and that's saying something, although, I mean, I always enjoyed the, the Saw movies to a certain extent. Um, they certainly um, did lose inspiration. Um, you know, they went, what, seven, eight films, if you include uh, Jigsaw. So, um, you know, with the, the thin premise that that film started with, uh, the, the original Saw, which I think is a horror classic, um, yeah, I felt that, that the series did a, did a good job of maintaining at least some form of interest in new creative ways of um, keeping keeping the viewer coming, um, even though uh, it certainly did lose steam there in, in the last few entries. Although Jigsaw, I did feel, uh, was a nice return, even though, you know, didn't didn't live up to the you know, original uh, original two films, which I, I you know I, I think were 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 the best of the series um but uh i digress getting back to spiral here uh spiral is basically just um marketing uh it's 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 using the saw name um for to, to make money there's not really much inspiration to it there's not really much uh new here um and even even the uh what it does take from uh, the Saw films, it does sparingly and not in any sort of uh, inspirational or exciting way, new way. Um, I mean, the the most interesting thing that it has going for it is it is is the stars. Uh, I mean, you've got Chris Rock and Samuel Jackson. I mean, especially Chris Rock, who doesn't make too many movies. Um, you expect well, this must be something. And uh, it's really not. Um, he's there just basically as a name. Um, the film is basically just a standard cop uh, movie um, with a few Saw touches. Um, and as I said, I mean, really, I guess that was what the Saw movies were. But what the Saw movies had was Jigsaw as an inspiration. Here, there's 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 no good villain. Um, there's no real exciting plot. The mystery is very um, obvious. And, um, even the, the, I really want to talk about the, cause to me, the Saw movies were really, uh, it was the ins inspiration of the devices themselves. And this movie has a couple, um, of them and they're really not, uh, anything too, uh, thoughtful or, or exciting. Uh, they don't, uh, the, the, you know, the filmmakers didn't really, uh, take much time to really bring the the saw formula back to life um it's really just uh going through the motions i mean um uh the director here was the man who made saw two three and four so he's very familiar with the uh, material in the franchise so um it really is surprising that uh then that this film is so uh dull and uh gimmicky and really just a ripoff. Um, there really isn't, uh, as I said, um, much to recommend here. Um, I suppose, I mean, it, 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 it does have the style of the Saw films and for the first, I'd say 30 minutes or so, it does, you know, keep the viewer interested and, and whatever, but then it quickly loses steam and we, 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 it becomes obvious that the film isn't really going anywhere. It's just a series of gimmicks and nothing else. And then, um, the one thing that it does have, uh, to match it with the Saw films is that, uh, perfunctory, uh, shock ending, surprise ending. And, uh, here 
uh, a it doesn't come as a surprise and b uh, it it is very reminiscent of surprises that we've seen in the Saw films. So um, while I wouldn't say it's a complete waste of time, I definitely wouldn't. It, it's definitely a waste of money. I definitely wouldn't recommend going to the theater, um, especially as I said, it's been uh, scarce for the last year being able to go to the theater, and, and this certainly uh, isn't worth uh, making that trip back. Um, so I would, uh, if, if you are a fan of the Saw movies, you, you'll find some enjoyment here, I'm sure, and uh, you'll want to see it at the very least. So I would recommend uh, watching it <clears throat> on video, but uh, other than that, uh, anyone else who wasn't a fan of the Saw films isn't going to be converted here. So um, I, would, I would say don't be fooled by the, by the marquee names and uh, avoid um, what is essentially uh, a, a trashy uh, ripoff of what was already uh, trash, though um, very respectable or stylized trash. So um, yeah, uh, three stars out of five for Spiral. Um, moving on, we have a uh, interesting film here, The uh, Woman in the Window. Um, it's essentially a, um, I don't want to say remake, but a reimagining, if you will, if, if, if that's even right, um, of Hitchcock's classic Rear Window. Uh, it's essentially, a, or at least a, a, it borrows from that film's premise. And uh, to great effect, actually, I, I actually really enjoyed this movie. Um, I was surprised actually at how much I enjoyed it just because I mean this movie is so uh, close to the plot of Rear Window and a, a premise that has been reused uh, a, a few times since um, you know as recently uh, or it, at least in my memory in 2007's uh, Disturbia which was basically a teenage uh, version of that of that classic film um, but what this film, uh, has that neither, that neither of the films, even including Rear Window has is a, uh, untrustworthy heroine, um, or, um, protagonist. Um, so therefore we aren't even really sure if she's seeing what she's seeing and, uh, she's, she's a somewhat disturbed individual and even setting aside the the plot um it's an interesting little character study and as played by amy williams this character is someone who we develop um sympathy for and understanding of and so we follow we really follow her character in to this predicament that she gets herself in and um as we follow her uh, down the rabbit hole uh the film does become um a series of uh, mysterious moments um as well as quiet uh, character moments uh, that come together um, quite nicely and uh, we question as much as she does um, what's going on and um, we're never really quite sure um, and then when the film does reach its conclusion I have to admit I was I was surprised um, it does um, have that rare uh, shock there at the end um, but it's not done uh, in the way that the Spiral movie, um, uh, like a Spiral did it, it, it does, um, doesn't feel forced. Uh, it is believable. And um, again, uh, it, 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 and it's interesting, it's shocking. It's, um, it, it, it's, a, it's a really good film. Um, and uh, there's a nice uh, little performance from Gary Oldman um, who has been doing very quite respectable work lately, and it's kind of nice to see him um, in the role that he plays, though I won't really reveal too much um, about it. don't want to give uh, anything in the movie away, but uh, this is a nice, quiet little thriller that um, I recommend. It's available on Netflix, so it's a nice movie to, to, to watch um, at home. Um, and uh, just sit back, kick back on the couch with some popcorn and enjoy a good old-fashioned thriller. Um, and especially if you're a fan of Hitchcock, um, you'll enjoy uh, this, uh, this little homage. 
Um, so, so yeah, I definitely recommend The Woman in the Window, uh, four out of five stars. And uh, moving on, uh, we move on to Army of the Dead, uh, which is uh, in theaters as well as available on HBO Max. And as I said, it's the follow-up, it's Zack Snyder's follow-up to um, his uh, Dawn of the Dead remake of George Romero's uh, classic. And um, in this, this time, he's moving completely into new territory. And uh, it really has nothing to do with Dawn of the Dead. All those characters are gone. Um, and uh, in a sense, like Spiral, uh, this movie isn't so much a zombie film. And in fact, at first, um, there are no real signs of, of, of the zombie except for, you know, the, the opening scene and the credits. Um, the film is actually a very well-made, uh, stylized uh, heist film uh, within the horror um, film. And... Uh, it's actually a very good heist film as well. Um, and, but like, like his Dawn of the Dead, he finds humor in the situation and he elevates it beyond, um, where as George Romero's films were, they were, they were comedic, but they were very, um, focused on the zombies. And um, in, the, in the traditional sense of horror, um, whereas um, Snyder has kind of taken the zombies as, and made them side characters. They're almost, um, uh, they're almost guest stars in their own movies, if you, in their own movie, if you will. Um, because really, you could take out the zombies in this movie and you would still have uh, not only essentially a, the, the same film, but you would ha you'd still have a good film. Uh, the zombies actually add an extra layer of tension. Uh, so I guess you would say they do make it a better film. Um, but for you horror fans and, and, and Romero fans and, and, and uh, genre fans, uh, zombie fans, this is uh, still a horror movie. Uh, so don't get me wrong. There are still plenty of, of scenes with zombies, scenes of horror. I mean, they do play a very prominent role in the plot um and uh it, it's actually very inspired this is probably one of the better zombie movies i've seen in a long time um zombies really um went away for a while and they made a comeback uh here in the last 20 years and they've almost overdone it with the resident evil and the the 20 days later with the, when you've got these uh, as a, you know in the world war z um where you just you, you, they're, they're basically uh, characters of themselves. Um, and, and um, you know, of course, with Walking Dead and everything, they just, it, it, it almost, they almost oversaturated the market, um, if you will. And um, so what Snyder here has done, he's kind of he's broken it back. He's kind of taken it back almost, uh, actually, uh, more reminiscent of the Romero films, where, um, you know the the zombies uh, are aren't uh, overwhelmingly um, attacking, and you know there aren't hundreds of them or thousands of them. Although you know in this sense uh, that there are more of them than in in uh, Dawn of the Dead, say you know which was enclosed in a mall. Um, but uh, what what Snyder really does does the best here is. Um, making the human characters more interesting than the zombies and therefore they uh we care about them we start we start getting in, involved in their story and then it is then that when the zombies uh really come into play that um we do feel the horror we do feel the suspense and um i also enjoy the way that um he also makes the zombies sympathetic so that they are in fact characters they're not just mindless um horror uh tools if you will um but they do have their own their own rules their own community uh it's actually it's a it's probably one of the better zombie movies i've ever seen um in that sense um but at the same time this is purely popcorn action entertainment and um so, you know, it's, it's, it's never less than entertaining. Um, 
So, um, you know, I highly recommend Army of the Dead. It was a lot of fun. And uh, you're definitely going to get your money's worth if you see it in the theater. And uh, you're definitely um, going to have a good time watching it at home. Um, it is uh, nearly two and a half hours long, um, which I would say is excessive for a zombie movie. Um, but uh, I have to admit, it, it did go by pretty quick. Uh, it never feels over long. Um, I do feel he probably could have trimmed it down uh, to a solid two hours and uh, maybe wouldn't necessarily have had a better movie, um, but uh, certainly uh, a, a more uh, palatable movie because it does drag just a little bit. Um, but, um, but I, I, you know, it's never boring. Uh, I will give it that. So I, I do highly recommend it. Uh, four and a half out of five stars. And uh, lastly, uh, which leads us to Cruella, which I have to say, um, I'm happy to report that I finally was able to make it to the movie theater uh, after, I believe, just under a year. Uh, it's just, it's been almost a year. Last movie I saw in the theaters was Tenet. Uh, which I believe was either, usually I'm so good at this, but it's been so long, I would say it's, uh, I believe it was the end of June, early July of last year. So, um, so yeah, uh, it was very, very nice to actually get back in the theater um, to see, and, and what better movie um, to see than Cruella, which is uh, one of the best movies I've actually seen so far this year. <clears throat> um, and, and uh, I am not a fan of the Disney uh, reimaginings, um, if you will, uh, you know, uh, especially the ones that pretty much just scene for scene remake. Uh, what I, I I do appreciate this more because it's it's taking a character and actually building a whole new movie, uh, which I appreciate. I enjoyed uh, Maleficent for the same reasons, although this is far better than that film um you could go into this with no knowledge of this character and it's still uh, a very interesting character study uh very fun film on its own uh but of course uh, i'm sure there are there are few if any that have never heard of cruella de vil um so um yeah, I was, uh, this is another uh, movie that I, caught me completely by surprise. Uh, I mean, I love Emma Stone, so uh, I knew it was going to be um, be something that I was going to want to see, but um, but I wasn't prepared uh, for how uh, involved this movie is, um, how specific and um, complex the movie is. Uh, it really... Uh, creates a fully full-blooded character um, out of what was essentially an over-the-top um, one-note villain um, in the original Disney uh, 101 Dalmatians, though one of the most memorable, um, admittedly, of their uh, villains. Um, but there really wasn't much to her, and so um, I was thinking, how are they going to make this film interesting? And once again, I saw that it was a two hour and 15 minute movie and I'm just thinking, what, what are they doing here? What is this going to be? And, uh, the movie had me hooked from the get go. It's a, it's a much darker, um, more mature, uh, Disney film than we've seen. Um, it's, uh, much, uh, more intense. I definitely would wouldn't recommend this for for younger viewers um whereas you know aladdin and uh, mulan um even with their pg-13 ratings were uh were still very you know stylized and cartoonish um this is uh for lack of a better word um an adult film um in the sense that it deals with a lot of mature themes, a lot of uh, mature elements. Um, and uh, I doubt little kids are really going to be interested um, 
and some very little children will likely be scared. So, but um, that said, uh, the film, um, as I said, does a really good job of uh, encompassing this character and really uh, bringing it to life. Uh, Emma Stone does a great job. And um, I also really enjoyed uh, the performance of Emma Thompson as uh, the film's um, villain. Uh, she um, is uh, delightfully um, evil, and uh, it's fun to see her chewing up the scenes um, in a way that I've, I've never seen her, her do before. Um, although there is, are touches um, uh, or hints um, in her film uh, Late Night. A similar character although this takes it um, you know way past past that but um, yeah I, uh, I highly recommend this film I definitely recommend seeing it in the theater uh, you could see it on Disney Plus but you have to pay a ridiculous upcharge of $30 um, if you you know and you have to have the, the subscription as well already so um, I would I would recommend bypassing all that and just going straight to the theater for this one. It's definitely worth the money, definitely worth the time, and uh, for me it was definitely worth the the trip back to the theater. And I uh, one of many I plan on getting back uh, to uh, the theater once again um, here shortly. Um, so uh, look for some more reviews coming soon. Uh, we've got uh, what Fast and Furious Nine. Um, coming out and uh got the conjuring uh three and uh, the quiet place two uh which i plan on getting to so um yeah i've got some time um i'm gonna be spending some time back at the theater and it feels good so um yeah so uh i'll look forward to talking more about those films um but as i said um Wrapping things up here, uh, I would say uh, the three films uh, that I recommend are Wrath of Man, um, The Woman in the Window, uh, Army of the Dead, and Cruella. Uh, I, would, I would skip Spiral um, altogether or for those who uh, would feel they must see it. As I said, see it on video. But the two films I highly recommend are Cruella and Army of the Dead, and I would recommend seeing them in theaters, even though I was not able to see Army of the Dead in the theater. I know I, I, I definitely wished I had. So um, so uh, anyway, thank you for joining me. Uh, I look forward to seeing you again uh, when we uh, discuss more, uh, more movies on Matner's Movie Musics. Thank you.